I'm Casey with Nectar Flow Yoga. Today I'll be taking you through a sequence that is representative of our Nectar Flow Empowered classes at the studio. If you're new to my style of teaching or new to yoga, power yoga in general, this is a great practice to start with. So come to your mat, big toes to touch, knees down, mat's width, and we'll come to child's pose. Center of your forehead down, fingertips stretch long. And start the process of dropping the day that came before this moment when you're on your mat. Working here toward presence as you link breath to movement. Soften your hips, your thighs. Let your breath be full and deep all the way into the belly. Let your shoulders rest heavy and wrap toward the earth. No gripping of the hands. Let them be relaxed as well. Release your jaw. Maybe rock side to side, the center of your forehead. Now I invite you to look a little deeper into your breath. See if you can smooth it out. Create a rhythm with your breath. Long, smooth, and even inhales and exhales. On your next inhale, rise up to tabletop. Stack your shoulders right over your wrists. Spread your fingers wide. Draw your belly up and in. And feel length from the crown of your head all the way to your tailbone. We're going to go into our cat cows. I love these because they give us a reference point for how we move our spine throughout our practice. So if you're familiar with cat cow, you can just tune me out and breathe through the motion. Otherwise, Cat cow, we lift the chin and the tailbone on the inhale. On the exhale, draw the belly up and in, chin to chest, tailbone tucks. That's cow pose, cat pose, excuse me. And here, cow pose, a back bend shape. Cat pose, rounding the spine. And just one more round. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the tailbone. Exhale, tuck the tail, bring your chin to your chest. Come back to neutral. Working our foundation here as we'll revisit this again and again, really root down through the knuckles of the fingers versus collapsing weight into your wrist. Maybe even grip the tips of your fingers down as well into the mat to bring strength into your forearms. Tuck your toes and then on an exhale, come to beast pose, hovering the knees just an inch or two above the mat. Super strong in the core, wrap your arms or your upper arms, I should say your shoulders back toward your hips. Draw your belly to your spine. We'll take one more inhale here. And then on the exhale, push into your hands to take your hips toward the back of the mat. Then begin to straighten your legs for downward facing dog. Nice and long in the spine. Head hangs heavy between the arms. No need to straighten the knees. If the flexibility is there, great. Otherwise, knees can be bent and the heels are working toward the earth versus spiking up but they do not need to touch the ground. One more inhale here. Check back in with the foundation of your hands, rooting your knuckles, particularly the forefinger knuckle and thumb knuckle down. Exhale fully. Inhale, look between your hands. Come up on your tippy toes. Walk your feet up toward your hands. Bend your knees. Forward fold. Grab opposite elbows. Let your head and neck go. This pose is called rag doll, and if you're feeling the release in your upper back, you may understand why. When we let our head hang heavy, the weight of the head can traction our spine. This is also a gentle inversion. We're bringing our head lower than our heart and our hips. On your next inhale, go ahead and bend your knees, drop your hips, root down and rise up. A little bit of a cow pose in your spine. Arms can be high and wide. Gaze up. And then exhale, hands down to your heart, chin to your chest, belly up and in. Here, take a moment to set any intention you may have for your practice. 
something to guide you, bring you back to the present moment. It can be a simple word or a mantra. And if nothing arises, allow your intention to be breath. Letting breath keep you anchored here in your body, in your practice. On your next inhale, bend your knees, root down, rise up. Arms can be high and wide or palms can meet overhead, gaze up. Exhale, bent knees, flat back, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, step your left leg straight back. Drop your left knee down and inhale up for Anjane Asana. Reaching tall. Here I'm rooting down into my right foot. Pressing down into my back left shin and finding length all the way through my fingertips. My arms are engaged and ignited, not hanging lax in space. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, shift your hips back. Half Hanumanasana, full. Head and neck release. Draw your right hip back. Right knee can be micro bent here. Do flex your right toes to get into your hamstring. Inhale, look forward as if you're going to draw your chin toward your right toe, then walk your hands forward. Take your right hand to your right knee and inhale, twist open to the right. Right fingertips maybe can extend skyward if this twist feels good in the spine. One more inhale and then on your exhale, plant your hands, come up on your back left toes, firing up your left thigh and take your right leg back to meet your left. High plank hold, press the ground away. Attend to the foundation of your hands, knuckles pressing in, maybe even fingertips gripping. Now, I encourage you to drop your knees here in high plank if you're still building strength for this pose. And the way you may know that you need that is your hips might be sagging and you're collapsing in the shoulders, or your hips may be piking and you're bringing the shoulders past or behind the wrists. Otherwise, we're here holding one more inhale. Exhale. Take it back, downward facing dog. And I encourage you to practice in front of a mirror if you're practicing over video. Since you don't have a teacher to have eyes on your body, you need to be your own teacher in that way. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, left foot steps through to your left thumb. Drop your right knee down and come up, Anjane Asana, on the left side. Root down through your front left foot, top of your right shin, pressing down firmly. We're active, hugging everything in and expanding out. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, shift back, straighten your left leg, flex your left toes, half Hanumanasana, half splits. Head and neck releasing. Inhale, walk forward. Plant your hands, come up on your back right toes, step your right foot up to meet your left. Inhale, halfway lift, find cow pose in the spine. Exhale, cat pose in the spine, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand, reach tall, reach long. Exhale, open twist to your right. Reach your right fingertips back, left arm reaches forward, ignite through the fingertips to fire up the arm muscle. From here, we'll inhale through center. Exhale, open twist left. Left hand goes back, right hip forward. Keep the knees bent at the same amount. So we're not going to bend one knee or the other more deeply. Inhale up through center. Gaze up and back. Arms can be high and wide, our hands together. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, find length in your spine. Exhale, right foot steps back, right knee drops. Inhale. Anjaneyasana. Exhale, open twist to the left. Reach back with your left hand forward with your right. From here, exalt. Reach your right fingertips long. Left hand finds the back of your right thigh. Keep all this length on the right side of your body as you find a prayer twist to the left. I like to make a fist with my bottom hand and cap it with my top hand. Got a line of energy from my back, right knee, all the way through the crown of my head, rooting down through my right shin and my left foot, and then using this bind of my right elbow 
pressing into my left knee to help me twist a little deeper. Inhale, up through center. Exhale, hands plant. Step left leg back, high plank, hold to down dog, or option to drop your knees, and then lower chest, chin, then your hips. Inhale, come up, cobra pose, back of your neck stays long. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift your hips first, then press up. Tuck your toes, down dog. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, right foot steps through to your right thumb. Drop your back, left knee down. Inhale, Anjane Asana. Exhale, open twist to the right. Inhale, exalt here. Reach long through your left fingertips. Gaze past your right so shoulder. Exhale, prayer twist to the right. Here, you may hear my ujjayi breath, breath of fire starting to kick in. This is a valved breath that helps build heat, but also support the movements, the motions with core strength. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands plant, left toes tuck. Inhale, step your left foot up to meet your right, halfway lift, forward fold, head and neck release. Inhale, root down and rise up to stand. Reach tall with your fingertips, but drop your shoulder blades down your back. Exhale, chair pose. Knees can be slightly apart. Feet can be hips width. Here we hold, chair reaching, or cactus your arms. Come back to your breath. When poses get challenging, notice what comes up for you. It's a good place if there's frustration or inner talk that's not serving you to come back to any intention you've set. One more inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands plant. This time we'll step it back to high plank and hold. Press the ground away. And then options, drop your knees, just hold high plank, or go through a full vinyasa. Up dog. Back to downward facing dog. Inhale, take your right leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, right leg long. Exhale, right foot steps through to your right thumb. Inhale, rise up. Crescent warrior. Optional to drop your back left knee and come to that Anjane Asana. Keep reaching long through your fingertips. Maybe palms meet overhead. We'll take one more inhale here. Exhale, open twist to your right. Inhale, exalt, reach long through the left finger. Exhale, prayer twist to the right. Breath is full and deep, supporting you. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands plant. Step your right leg back. Your trip to downward facing dog. It's through up dog or cobra or holding high plank. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, left leg long. Exhale, left foot steps through. Inhale to crescent. Set yourself up. Your hip points are facing to the short edge of your mat, the front of your mat. Maybe your hands meet overhead and you gaze up. Feel into the strength of your foundation here. One more inhale. Exhale, open twist to your left. Left arm back, right arm forward. Super strong through the fingertips. We'll reach, exalt. Exhale, prayer twist to your left. Inhale, reach. Exhale, vinyasa. Hands plant, high plank, chaturanga, up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Big breath in, big exhale. Inhale, look forward, come up on your toes, and then step or jump to the top of your mat. 
Halfway lift, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, chair pose, sit low, belly up and in, reach tall. Exhale, hands bind at your low back this time. Interlace your fingers, take the fingers away from the sacrum and lift your chest. Take one more inhale. Exhale, forward fold, maybe keep the bind. Inhale, halfway up, belly is up and in. Exhale, release your hands and plant them. This time, option to jump back, try to land your feet lightly. So the hands will plant, knees will bend, and then land your feet at the back of the mat and find your way to downward facing dog. Inhale, your right leg high. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, right leg long. Exhale, right foot to your right thumb. Ground your back left heel. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. Reaching tall, reaching long. Notice here in warrior one, unlike warrior two, our hips are not pointing straight at the front of the mat, nor are they open to the side, but they're slightly on an angle. My chest, though, squares to the front of the mat. Take one more inhale, reaching on your exhale. Interlace your fingers at your low back. Inhale, lift your chest, lift the sacrum, hands away from the sacrum, knuckles toward your back left foot. Exhale, humble warrior. Breath is full and deep, release your head and neck. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, unbind your hands, vinyasa. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left foot to your left thumb. Inhale, rise up. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana A. Shoulders away from your ears. Length through the arms to the fingertips. Rooting down through the knife's edge of your back right foot. Inhale, one more reach. Exhale, bind your hands at your low back. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, humble. Several breaths, working the stretch in the arms, the shoulders. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, hands plant. Step back, flow through. Again, always an option to skip those transitions and go straight to down dog. Big breath in here. Big exhale. <sighs> Inhale, look forward. Come up on your toes, lifting your heels, and then step, baby step, or an option to jump to the top of the mat. Forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, hands to your heart, sit your hips low. We'll prayer twist to the right. Squeeze your knees together. The tendency is to let this left knee scoot out in front of the right. We want to try to keep the knees tracking in the same line. The lower you sit your hips, the deeper you can take this pose. Inhale through the center. Exhale, forward fold. Heel toe your feet, hips width apart. Peace fingers around your big toes, in between the big toe and the second toe. And then bend your elbows out to the side. Take your hip bones high. Roll your shoulders down your back toward your hips and let your head just hang. So this is an active pose. This is not a resting pose. We're using strength in the arms to deepen the stretch in our legs, but the legs remain active. Breath stays full and deep. Inhale, up halfway, release the bind. Heel toe your feet together on an exhale and then inhale, chair pose. Sit low, hands to your heart, exhale, twist to the left. Prayer chair twist. Inhale through the center, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Padahastasana, 
Soles of the feet stepping onto your hands, toes to your wrist creases. Bend your elbows out to the sides. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release the bind of your hands. We'll plant the hands and then step or hop back through your chaturanga to your up dog or cobra to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, bend and stack this time. Open up, lifting your right knee to the ceiling, kicking your right heel toward your glute. Now, if flip dog is something that's already in your practice, you can practice with me. This is a transition I like to teach in person, though. Shift forward into a high plank sort of shape, then slowly bring your right foot behind you. Lift your hips and flip your dog. Roll back through high plank. Right knee, right elbow. Step your right foot through. Warrior two. Set yourself up here. Now we have open hips, so both hip points facing toward the long edge of the mat. Reaching long through your fingertips. Breath is full and deep. Try to stack your right knee right over your right ankle. Drive your left knife's edge of your foot into the mat. Inhale. Reach long through your right fingertips. Exhale, side angle. Maybe extend your side angle, reaching toward the top of your space. Gaze down at your right big toe. Tuck your chin into your throat. Then look up at your left hand. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill your hands down. Option for adding on three-legged vinyasa. In your up dog, you want the tops of your feet flat, both feet, downward facing dog. Inhale, take your left leg high. Exhale, left knee, right elbow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend and stack, open up. Left knee is lifting, kicking your left heel toward your left glute. Optional. Flipping your dog, you'll come up on your right toes, shift toward a high plank shape, drop the knife's edge of your right foot to slowly bring your left foot behind you. Roll back, high plank, left knee, left elbow, step your left foot through, warrior two, left side. About five breaths here. Settling into warrior two shape. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Reach your right fingertips long. Inhale. Reverse, exhale, windmill down, left leg lifts, or traditional or modified vinyasa. Big breath in, big exhale. Inhale, look forward, we'll step, hop, float the feet up to the hands. Land lightly if you can, and then take crow pose or crow pose setup. So, Setting up for crow pose, you can keep the feet slightly apart, bend the knees, and imagine you're bending chaturanga arms. Backs of your knees will make contact. If you already know crow, of course, go ahead and go there and hold, adding on if you'd like. Otherwise, if you're learning crow, you play with the rock of the weight into your hands. It's not so much about lifting my feet, right? If I try to lift my feet, I'm not gonna get that stability. Instead, it's about counterbalancing the weight of my feet with a shift forward of my head. So notice, I'm rocking that weight forward, lifting my toes. 
We'll meet in a forward fold. Head and neck release. Let it go. <sighs> Inhale, rise up to stand. Exhale, hands to your heart. Come back to any intention you set for your practice or simply come back to breath. And I'm gonna face this side of the mat for this next series. Coming into our standing series, we will start with our right leg lifted, rooting down into the left side. So I want you to find this long line of energy from your left heel through your left hip, left shoulder, out through the crown of your head. Lift your right knee into your right hand. Now, if you have a lot of hamstring flexibility and strength, you can take the foot grab, but I want you to avoid doing that at the expense of rounding your spine forward. We wanna keep a nice straight and tall spine. I'm reaching through my right knee or my right foot, depending. And I'm going to inhale, open up out to the right. Super challenging. Again, if you have the knee, this may be a little easier. And you may be just playing here with tapping the toes down for balance. Whether you have the toe or the knee, we'll inhale back to center. Exhale, take your right leg across. Wrap it for eagle pose. Right arm will go under and I'll come back here to this side of the mat. So we're in right side eagle at the moment, I'm a little unstable myself. You can keep the right toes rooting outside of the left foot if you'd like. Inhale, rise up with your right leg and then option to keep your eagle arms or unbind them as you float your right leg back into an airplane. Belly is up and in, spine is long. We'll inhale, reach long through your fingertips, step back to crescent warrior. Belly up and in, reach. Exhale, warrior two, left side. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Look at your left big toe. Shift into half moon pose. This is one of my favorite postures. You can use a block under your left hand. Simply have it kick standing for your balance at the top left corner of your mat. Reach tall, long through your right fingertips. Lift through your right foot. One more inhale. On your exhale, slow lower your right foot back. Reverse. Triangle, straighten your left leg, reach tall through your left fingertips. Exhale, Trikunasana. Several breaths here, another one of my favorite poses. Any variation that feels like it works in your body. So if there's pinching or discomfort, pay attention to how you're holding your pelvis. Try not to lock out your front left knee. Take one more inhale. And then on your exhale, sweep your right arm down and fold into a wide leg forward fold. Walking your hands in line with your feet. The pinky edges of your feet are parallel with the short edges of your mat here. So notice if you've got the heels turned in, toes out, try to adjust that. And then we're finding similar length as we did in our forward fold. So lifting your sits bones, Inhale up halfway, hands on your hips. Go ahead now and turn your heels in, your toes out, and sit low. Reach up, goddess pose. One more inhale. Exhale, hands to your heart. Straighten your legs. And now we'll turn our left toes to the front of the mat. Step your right foot up and out, setting up for a pyramid pose with the left leg forward. Inhale, reach, hip points facing the front of the mat here. Exhale, hinge mostly from your left hip and fold over toward your straightened left leg. Head and neck release. Breath is full and deep. Inhale up halfway, plant your right hand, left hand to your left hip on an exhale, draw your belly up and in, lengthen your spine. Inhale, twist, 
Maybe extend your right fingertips. Think less of bringing the fingertips toward the sky and more of shining your heart to your left side of your space. One more inhale. Exhale, fold, plant your hands. And then we'll take our right leg up for standing splits here. Now, standing splits in and of itself is super strong and powerful pose. I'm lifting through my inner right thigh, keeping my right hip point squaring down, rooting down strongly into my left leg. Maybe challenge your balance, binding your hands behind your left calf. Or if you're a handstander and you wanna work some handstand hops, the arms go straight and strong, and you'll play with this little float of your bottom left leg. One more inhale, exhale, forward fold, head and neck, release. Inhale, rise up to stand. Exhale, left knee into your left hand or hand to foot. Again, binding only to the foot if you're not compromising the shape in your spine. And if you're practicing in front of a mirror or can video yourself, that's a great way to know. Inhale, open out to the left. Bring it back to center, cross your body. Find Eagle Pose left side. Left knee wraps on top of the right leg. Bind your arms, sit low. Maybe you find that full Eagle wrap, maybe not. Squeezing your joints together, feeling into the stability and strength of this pose. Keep your Garudasana or Eagle arms or unravel them. Take it back to airplane. One more inhale, exhale. Drop your back left heel. Inhale, reach for Crescent Warrior. Exhale, Warrior Two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Gaze down at your right big toe. Come into your half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Single leg balance here opening and if you think about it you're really in a trikunasana like shape here but just on one foot one more inhale look down at your right big toe exhale lower your left foot reverse trikunasana exhale triangle pose Sweep your left arm down and around and forward fold here toward the long edge of your mat. Toes are pointing forward, head and neck release. Options here would be to take this big toe bind or interlace your fingers behind your back, lift your chest and fold. Head and neck releasing, work the knuckles toward the earth. Inhale up halfway, bend your knees and rise all the way up to stand. Turn your right toes back to the top of your mat. Step your left foot up and out, hands are on your hips. Inhale, lift your chest, lift your arms, hips are pointing forward. And then hinge, drawing the right hip back, bringing your sternum over your straightened right leg. Let your head and neck go. Keep your flake sacrum nice and flat here. Inhale up halfway, belly up and in on an exhale as you bring your right hand to your right hip. Then inhale, twist, open to the right. Extend your right fingertips out from your right shoulder. One more inhale, exhale, hands plant. Inhale, standing splits. Any variation here, holding for about seven breaths. So we're staying a good bit of time here in this really strong posture. Again, the option for your handstand hops, the hands plant, and then maybe just little hops, not overdoing it with the kick and the lift. Working toward floating upside down with control.
we will meet in a forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Shift your weight into your right foot. Take your left foot into your left hand, grabbing that inner arch or the big toe mount. Dancer pose, now this may just look today like this variation here where we're bending the knee and have the foot into the hand and kind of playing with balance. If you're nice and open, feeling strong and stable, you can begin to kick your foot into your hand. I'm not feeling so stable today. And open up for relatively big back bend here. Open hips. Opening and lengthening your quadricep as well as balancing. One more inhale. On your exhale, slow lower your left foot for a warrior one shape. Inhale. Notice hips are the same position here in warrior one as they are in dancer. On your exhale, plant your hands inside of your right foot and find lizard pose, your variation of lizard. So to teach to lizard, I was having, enjoying a moment <laughs> in the pose myself. Right toes will turn out to the right corner of the mat. Nice edge of the right foot rooting down. And the knee kind of splays out. So to show you, it can be like this here in your lizard pose. If that feels uncomfortable in your hips, you can take a more stable variation. I might not even be in the frame here, like so hugging the right knee in. Okay, from our lizard, come up on to your hands if you drop down to your forearms, up on the back, left toes, and then step your left foot up to meet your right. Sit here in your yogi squat, Malasana. From Malasana, we'll inhale, rise all the way up, heel toe the feet together, exhale hands to your heart. Inhale, dancer pose, right side. Lengthen the right quadricep, left fingertips extend, and then we kick and lift. This pose takes so much focus for me. I think it's one that comes easy for others. Maybe not, maybe that's just in my head. One more inhale, exhale. Drop your right foot, warrior two. Excuse me, warrior one. Reach tall, reach long, exhale, plant your hands, lizard pose. Kind of slowly starting the process of winding down. Working into the hips. Come up on your hands, root your left foot down, step your right foot up to meet your left. Here, we'll take our yogi squat once more. Slowing down your breath. And back to intention. Your next exhale, forward fold. Heel toe your feet together. Halfway lift. Chance for a vinyasa, maybe stepping or jumping back. If you're hand standing and you wanna play with that jump, really play with the shift of the weight into your hands as you hold and float through. Downward facing dog. In right leg high, exhale, pigeon pose, right side. Right knee to right elbow, we'll inhale. Lift long with the spine, and then exhale, fold. Hold your pigeon pose. Find some ease. If this feels uncomfortable in your knee, I encourage you to bring a block under the hip. Bring your right foot closer To the left hip is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Finding less of a deep bend in that knee, or I should say angle. Deeper bend is actually what's happening. 
And if you're not feeling this at all and you need more feedback, you can bring the right shin closer to parallel and flex your right foot. This pose is really unique to each person and unique to what's happening in each person's hips on any given day. It's different for me just about every time I come into it. Inhale, walk yourself up. I want you to roll onto your right hip. So you're going to roll onto your right hip here and swing your left leg around. Coming into this tree pose shape in excuse me, seated. So we'll lift our chest, inhale. On the exhale, bring your right hand behind your right hip, left hand to right knee and twist. Inhale, reach up and over with your right hand. Maybe bring right fingertips behind your head, press your head into your hand. Inhale, come up. Plant your right hand behind your right hip. Sweep your left hand up and over. Hips high, reach long. One more, inhale, exhale. Hips low, swing around and fold forward over your straightened left leg. Maybe bind your right hand to the outer left foot. Inhale, come up. Bring the soles of your feet together. Baddha Konasana. We'll inhale to lift our chest. Exhale, fold. Bound angle pose or butterfly legs here. Inhale, come up. On our exhale, we'll switch it over, pigeon pose, left side. So you'll swing your right leg back. If you wanna come through down dog and enter the same way we did on the right side, that's fine. Otherwise, notice left side is probably going to feel different from the right. For me, my left hip is a lot tighter than my right hip. My left knee is a lot crankier than my right knee. And I didn't mention on the right side, but there is a variation that requires you to lie on your back, but is much easier on the knees and the hips. So note that one for any time pigeon pose is called. Figure four shape in the legs, back, head, neck resting. You draw this knee toward you and push the figure four knee away from you for more intensity. Wherever you are, if you're on your back or in pigeon pose, we're gonna meet in this tree pose shape with the right leg straight, this time left knee bent. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, twist to your left. Inhale, reach up and over with your left hand. Finding this big stretch, maybe take left fingertips behind your head, press some feedback of your head into your hand and reach your left elbow toward your right toes. Inhale, come up, plant your left hand, sweep your right arm up and over, find stargazer pose, a little back bend. We'll exhale, swing the hips down, fold over a straightened right leg. Inhale, come up. Exhale, we'll find our legs out in front of us for seated forward fold or Paschimottanasana. And personally, I really like to have something supporting the underside of my knees in this pose. So if you don't have a bolster, you can grab kind of like a lumbar pillow and place that underneath your knees. This one just happens to be here. Gently flex your toes toward your face. Lengthen your spine, draw your belly up and in. Root your sits bones down. And then release all that. Hinge and fold. Let your head and neck be the last to go. Big release, not just for the hamstrings here, but for the full length of the spine. 
I'm going to take about 10 full deep breaths here in this posture. You'll be feeling your back unravel with each exhale. When I'm left to my own devices, I would stay in this pose all day, but you have to move on. Inhale, come up, let your head in the neck. Last, be the last to come up. So unfurling like a fern frond. Sit nice and tall. And then if you have a pillow or a bolster, you can go ahead and set that to the side. We'll plant our feet. So a little core work for just a moment coming in to boat pose. And you can modify boat pose by grabbing the backs of the thighs or even keeping the toes down, but attending to not rounding your spine, instead lifting the spine. You can amplify your boat pose by extending the legs straight, maybe even extending the arms. And we're here for three more breaths. I'm gonna take this variation. One more inhale, and then on your exhale, I want you to slowly lower your low back first, legs stay either bent or straight, then lower your upper back. Now bend your knees and plant your feet. Coming here to our bridge pose setup. In bridge pose, I want maybe, maybe, your fingertips can touch your heels. That's a good way to see that your knees are stacked right over your ankles versus extended out like so. So pay attention to that. Knees are about hips width apart, and we want the bones to kind of be pointing um, straight ahead versus splaying in or out. On your next inhale, I want you to lift your chest by wiggling your shoulder blades, bending your elbows so the fingertips point at the ceiling, and then lift the hips. Keep the pelvis heavy at first, so you're working not so much from the glutes, but from the quads. Lift as high as you can with your quads, then squeeze your glutes and lift your hips a little higher. From there, release the glutes, keep the hips where they are. Press a little higher in with the quads, lengthening there. Now squeeze the glutes and lift. Release the glutes, keep your hips where they are. Press the back of your head in. Push down with the backs of your arms. Option here to interlace your fingers or keep the arms where they are. If you're interlacing, use that to gain more lift. One more inhale. Exhale. Unwrap the shoulders first. Bend back into your elbows. Drop your hips. Then roll the low back down. Okay, another bridge pose. And you can kind of set yourself up in the same way. Sort of lifting one part of the body at a time. Starting with the quads then the glutes, then the shoulders. Otherwise, we're going to come into wheel pose if it's something you already practice. So this is another one where I really like um, to have my eyes on you as a teacher in person. Um, so if it's in your practice, you can do it. Otherwise, come back to bridge. So from here, press into your feet. Inhale, lift the hips, but keep the hip bones of pelvis heavy. We're lifting with our quads. From there, we'll start to lift with the glutes and press into the hands, straighten the arms and work the shoulders. Same pattern, glutes, I'm sorry, quads, glutes, shoulders. Quads, glutes, shoulders to deepen. One more inhale. On your exhale, bring your chin to your chest first, then bend your elbows, lower your shoulders, then your hips. From here, bring your knees together and your feet wide. Constructive rest. Cross your arms at your chest. And I have a mic in the way, so it's a little challenging for me to do that. But we'll wrap arms across the chest and rest here. Maybe little bitty windshield wipers of the knees. Don't take this super large. I want you to just swish them side to side gently. And then from there, walk your feet together. Open your palms to face up and find Supta Baddha Konasana. Reclined butterfly. Knees are wide, soles of your feet together. 
jaw releases. Slowly start to draw your right knee on top of your left like you're closing the cover of a book. Scoot your hips to the middle of the mat and we'll take a supine twist. Extend your right fingertips long. Maybe even drop this right knee all the way to the earth, staggering the leg. Roll onto your belly for a sphinx pose. Elbows are stacked right underneath your shoulders. Your arms, forearms are parallel. I want you to press the forearms down into the mat. Draw your chest through your shoulders. Lift. One more inhale. Exhale. Interlace your hands, bring your left cheek to the mat, and bring your right knee out. You can also bring the arms too. 